the Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today we are taking a look at Dragon Castle, which was designed by uh, Hajal, Hajalmar uh, Hawk. I am so sorry. I am not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, Luca Ricci and Lorenza Silver, and it's published by Horrible Games. Now this is a Mahjong style game for two to four players. The premise being that the Dragon Castle is in ruins and you will be building uh, your realm using the leftover, the ruin tiles from the Dragon Castle. You're going to do this by taking matching sets of tiles and placing them onto your realm board. When you have collected a large enough set of tiles, you're going to consolidate them to score them for victory points. And then you may also put some shrines on there, which will give you some victory points at the end of the game. The game also comes with some cards that can give you a special action each game and mixes up the end game scoring. So why don't we take a look at the setup and how to play, and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. All right, to set up Dragon Castle, uh, first of all, you're going to find the game board for the number of players that you are playing. This is for a two-player game. And then each player will get a player board along with one shrine that they can put off to the side in front of them. Next, you're going to set up the board. Now, to set up the board, you're going to use these, these tiles here. Uh, these very beautiful, beautiful tiles. All right. And you will set them up face up uh, in a stack of three, two, and then one. And we'll just go ahead and do that right now. All right, once you have uh, the uh, dragon castle set up, you also have these uh, dragon markers, which uh, depending on the number of players, since we're doing two players, you would place them out like so and just stack up the rest of them. Also, uh, each player is going to get a player aid card, which is double-sided. Uh, these are the actions, and these here are some scoring rules. You also have a number of 1, 3, and 5 victory point tokens. Just place those to the side of the board. You also have a bunch of shrines that you can set off to the side of the board. That's not all of them, that's just a few of them. Alright, now you also have two sets of cards uh, that you will uh, draw one card from each of them. The first one, these are uh, special actions that you can take during your turn. Uh, these will add extra actions, and the way that you can tell the action cards is that they have the character art on them going horizontally along the side of the card. Also, if you see uh, this symbol here, these are recommended for starters, uh, so uh, we would probably want to choose, and we will choose one from this game. We'll go ahead and choose this card. Now we haven't gone over the actions yet, but uh, this action here will allow you to take two uh, tiles that don't match. They're the same color, but they don't match uh, by performing this action. We'll talk about those special actions, actions in a little bit. Then you have some uh, uh, cards here that will give you uh, victory points at the end of the game. You can tell these because they have art that are vertical on the, the different cards. Again, they have uh, designations if uh, they're recommended for starting games. So we'll go ahead and play with this one. This kind of helps you give you additional objectives during the game. This one says that for any face-up blue or black tile that you have in your province on your player board, uh, you will get two victory points for each. And that is how you set up Dragon Castle. All right, to play Dragon Castle, players are going to take alternating turns choosing one of three actions. And there is a fourth action that you can take later on in the game. But the first action that you can take is that you are allowed to take any two matching tiles. So the symbols have to match on them. Now there are a couple of rules for taking tiles. First, the first tile that you take has to be from the very top 
part of the castle. So these here, these you, you would have to take from first. Also, to be able to take a tile, you have to have at least one long edge exposed. So you wouldn't be able to take this tile here because only the short edge is exposed. But you'd be able to take any of the these outer three uh, tiles here, these outer six tiles. So on your turn, you are allowed to take two. So I could take this one off the top and this one here, okay? That was on the second row, that is legal. These symbols do match, so I am allowed to take those. So whenever you take tiles or a tile, you can place them into your province uh, anywhere you want. They don't have to be touching, they don't have to be next to each other, adjacent, nothing like that. You're allowed to place them anywhere that you want. But let's say I'm gonna place this one over here. There's a reason for that. Because let's say as I begin to get more and more tiles, I am putting them out here like this. Now let's say on my next turn I picked up two more tiles. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place them right here. Now at any time, if you have four or more connecting tiles, and again, they just have to connect by color. Symbol doesn't matter once they're on to your province board, only the color matters. Once you have at least four, uh, this would count as four. Uh, this would not count as four because being diagonal is not considered adjacent, but something like that would be considered four or more adjacent. Once you've done that, you can now consolidate these tiles. You consolidate, or you must actually, you don't have a choice. Once you have four or more, you must consolidate. You do that by turning over all of those tiles and then you will score based on the number of tiles that you turned over. On our player aid card here, we turned over six tiles, so we will get five victory points. Also, because the tiles were blue, we are allowed to put two shrines on this completed stack. Now we don't have to, but we may. We can put one or both or none. And we may place them on any that we want. Now something is important to note here. Whenever you have tiles that are, are face up, you can't cover them up. All right, you are not allowed to build on top of tiles that are still face up. So maybe I'll go ahead and put one shrine there and keep the other one for later. The reason that you're wanting to place shrines is because at the end of the game, for every shrine you have on the first level of a tower, you'll get one point. Two points if it's on level two, three points if it's on level three or higher. So this, at the end of the game, will give me one extra victory point. So now I am allowed to build on top of other tiles. So maybe I got a couple of tiles like that, even though they don't match. Don't look at that. Don't yell. Oh no. And then maybe I place one like that. And then later I pick up a, a couple of more and I place one like that and one like that. All right. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, even though this is on a different level, you're still looking at it like it's top down. And we now have five that are adjacent. So once again, we would consolidate these. And then again, looking at our scoring reference, because we had five, we'll get three victory points. And because it was a red building, we are allowed to put one shrine on top of it. Again, this is on top of what you just consolidated. You can never uh, save, so maybe, you know, you can't save the shrine for later. If you want to place that on top of what you just consolidated, you would need to do it now. And keep in mind, the shrines must come from your supply. You cannot get them from the general supply. So maybe I place that there. This now means at the end of the game, I'm going to get two points for this one, one point for that one. The next thing you're allowed to do is to just take one tile. Again, you still have to follow the same rules, but I could take this tile, for example, if I just take one tile, then I am allowed to get 
a shrine and I'll place that into my supply on my player board. The third action you can do is to just discard a tile completely from the game. So I could take this tile here Fine. You want and me gone? get rid of it. If I do, then I will pick up one victory point. So after you have taken your tile or tiles and uh, place them onto your board, consolidating them as necessary, play will continue with the next player. And again, you will alternate turns uh, choosing tile or tiles until you get to this bottom row here. Before we go on to that, let's talk about the special action that you can take and how you are able to do this. Now, you are allowed to do this special action in addition to your regular turn. To do so, you have to either discard a face-up tile from your province or discard a shrine from your supply. If you do uh, either of those actions, then you are allowed to take this special action. And this action states that you are allowed to take two tiles of the same type, even if they don't match. So the types are broken into the colors, okay? So I could say take this one here, and even though this one doesn't match, I would be able to take this one uh, as my two tiles, by performing that special action. You can only do that special action once per turn. Now you can perform this action at any time during your turn and again it's in addition to your turn so uh, then I could go on and say I could take... Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what matches. Do you see anything that matches? Where are you? Hmm? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Now play will continue alternating back and forth until you get down to the final level. Once the top two levels in the game are gone, you now have another action that you can take. You are allowed to take one of these dragon tokens, okay? If you take the first one, you're going to take it from the far right, all right? And this is essentially just, it's just going to give you two victory points. And this is the only action you can take during your turn. Once uh, this symbol here is revealed, that triggers the end of the game. All players up to the starting player will get one final turn, and then you'll move on to the scoring phase. All right, so let's say that we've uh, played this out, and here we are uh, at the end of the game. The game has been triggered. We're now ready to move on to final scoring. The first thing we're going to do is add up any uh, victory points that we obtained during the game, along if we picked up any of these dragon tokens, add those up. Then you're going to look at your shrines, and you're going to figure out how many points you got. So I have two here on the first level, so those are one, two points. This one is on level two, that is two points. This one is on level three, and it wouldn't matter if this was on level four or not, it's still just three points. This one did not get completed, so it's not worth anything. Finally, you're going to look at this card here. And remember, we had a scenario set up for every blue or black uh, face up tile that we had. We were going to get two points a piece. We do have two of those, so that'll be worth four points. Shrines that you have left over are not worth anything, and again, these are not worth anything. Whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the game. All right, so that was Dragon Castle. Let's talk about the components. First off, the tiles are absolutely gorgeous. Very well designed. They, they have the feel and weight of like your, your dominoes that you, uh, you know, those like clay dominoes that you would have. Uh, they are very well made. They have the designs etched into them with some great color. And even on the backs of the tiles, it's textured, which again, you know, you didn't have to do that in the, uh, you know, in the design, but a very nice touch. The shrines are really nice. They're very nice, well-made component. And the game boards themselves, uh, they have very nice art, very thematic art throughout the game. Now I do wish maybe the cards for the special powers, or I should say special action, 
and end game scoring. Maybe I wish those were differentiated a little bit. Yeah, I, I know that you know one set of cards, the art on them is horizontal and vertical on the other, but they still get a little confusing shuffling through those. So uh, that'd be the only thing on the components that that um, you know I, I would have liked to have seen different. All right, as far as the gameplay, uh, this is a Mahjong style game, so there is an abstract feel to it. I thoroughly enjoy playing Mahjong, so for me, this game was kind of a no-brainer. But on top of that, there's this whole building your realm element to that. The way that you build that and trying to maximize when you consolidate it gives a kind of a pressure luck feel to it, especially at higher player accounts, because you're not quite sure if mm, you'll have enough tiles maybe to consolidate the way that you want. And then you're also trying to build, you know, the uh, realm higher so that you can put shrines on them to get even more points at the end of the game. Uh, you also have to make sure that you are collecting those shrines. So when you do that, you're only taking one tile instead of two, which slows down building your realm, but will help you get points later in the game. You also have to keep an eye on that end game scoring and try to manipulate your realm so that you can take advantage of those uh, crucial end game scoring points as well. I love that the instructions come with a bunch of different ways that you can set up the, the dragon castle based on the number of players. The, the instructions have a whole bunch of different ways based on the player count. So we've used those in like a two player game. We've used a couple of the different setups besides the, the normal setup like you saw in the, uh, in the review. On top of that, you know, the, you, there is a board in there where you can just use it to set it up however you want. You're not limited to, you know, the way that it's set up in the game. It's, it's yours, you can set it up however you want. And I think that's pretty cool. I think that the spirit and dragon cards that add that extra action and the end game scoring really adds to the replayability. If you didn't have things like that and the way that you would build your realm, the game probably could feel a little uh, repetitive, you know, with that Mahjong style. But adding that really mixes up the gameplay and makes you have to focus differently on each game. Replayability, this, this game has not felt uh, like a repetitive. And I think a lot of it has to do with those different cards and the way that the layout is. Again, uh, I think there's a lot of replayability. The game does scale well enough, although I think I prefer this game best at two players or three players. When you get to four players, obviously there's going to be more you know, fighting for the different tiles and there's going to be more turns to take before it gets back to you. So you, when you play four players, you really have to pay attention to what other people are collecting, how many tiles are left, because if you played this game at two players or three players uh, several times, which I had done before I played it with four players, you're building your realm and you're thinking, you know, I got plenty of time to build this thing up, but tiles are depleting a lot quicker, so you really have to pay attention at a higher count. But uh, overall, I think the game does scale pretty well. The things that uh, maybe I'd like to see a little differently, one of that is the tiles can get a little fiddly, on, especially in your realm board when you are consolidating. You know, if you have some tiles that are deeper down, maybe you have a higher realm, uh, you know, uh, higher higher shrine, and you're trying to reach in and start flipping tiles over, it's, it can get a little fiddly. There's also, you know, one of the turn actions you can take is to completely remove a tile to gain a victory point. Kind of like a hate drafting type of thing that I'm not a huge fan of because you're basically, you, you can just block somebody else. You know they want this 
particular tile and you can just take it from the game and take a victory point so it's like adding insult to injury but overall if you're a fan of mahjong then i think you'll really love this game if you're not but you like abstract type of games uh, especially because this game has that realm building in it you may enjoy it as well for me i really enjoyed this i give this game an eight now if you've liked this review uh, please leave a nice comment hit that thumbs up uh, subscribe to our channel check out our other great content and once again i thank you for stopping by thank you for visiting the arch gaming network for more great content check us out at archgamingnetwork.com subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on twitter and like us on facebook